Hey there and welcome back. It's time to create our disintegration effect. Basically we want to make it look like our subject is uh, turning into little particles and then we want to have those particles go somewhere and we've got our brushes ready to go. Now before we get into just starting creating random particles, it's always a good idea to have some reference images. Uh, pretty much when I do any type of creative work, I always gather a bunch of reference images and this gives me a good place to start. So, got a little bit of inspiration for you. Uh, we're going to go to Google and just type in birds in formation. There we go. And uh, let's just go to an image search here. I'm going to find these guys over here. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos of these birds flying in formation, but they're absolutely incredible. These are all just still photos, obviously, but the videos are just nuts. Take a look at these birds flying in formation. So you can see there's like density that happens within all of these formations, okay? It's not just like a random scattering of particles. So th some areas are more dense than others and they're kind of like well defined, you know, there's like relatively good boundaries for all of these uh, particles. Now these are all, I don't own the copyright for these photos, they're obviously just Google image searches, so we're not including them with this tutorial, but it's always a good idea to have these as references, okay, and just about every creative project that I do, uh, I use a reference and there's nothing wrong with using references in your photo as long as you're not actually using this picture in your final piece and then publishing it because obviously you don't own the copyright to it but using it as a reference is a wonderful wonderful idea so uh you can do this in a couple ways you can just have uh have this up like i've actually got two monitors set up you can't see the other one you can see the edge of this one here uh, so i can just take this and like put it on my other monitor and look at it while I do this, or you can copy it right here in the Google search and then paste it into Photoshop. Um, I'm just going to use this as a reference on a second monitor. But again, as long as you don't actually use the photo in your final piece, it's totally fine to do that. It's just, again, it's, it's a reference thing, so you don't have to worry about uh, copyright. And if you really wanted to, you could say thanks for the reference, and then you can cite the image if, if you wanted to. But again, just don't don't use a Google image search in your photograph. If it's on like Adobe stock and you purchase the right to it, or it's on like Unsplash, which is a great free stock website, uh, then sure, you can use that in your final image. I just want to make sure that, that it's very clear. I'm not in any way suggesting that you use a copyrighted photo in your composite and then publish that as your work because you could get into trouble legally and it's also just uh, ethically wrong to do that as well. But as a reference, totally okay. Okay, so I'm just going to click this and drag it over there. So I've got my reference that I'm looking at and we're going to go with something um, uh, basically similar type of approach for this photograph. So let's go ahead and hit F4 full screen and we're ready to start our particle system. So I'm going to hit Control or Command G. All right. So we're going to do this in a couple of different steps. The first step we want to do is make it look like my subject is falling apart a little bit, <laughs> making her look like she's disintegrating away. So what, we're going to start off that with this. All right. So we're just going to call this body disintegration body. Okay. Now for this, we're actually going to use the clone stamp tool. So something that you may not be aware of is that you can use custom brushes with the clone stamp tool as well. So check this out. If I hit S for the clone stamp tool and I just right click and I go to disintegration one, there we go. You just have to, uh, first thing, couple things, little housekeeping here. Uh, up here at the top where it says sample, make sure it says current and below because we are on a new layer. Okay, so make sure it's sampling the current layer and anything underneath it. Okay, so I'm with my clone stamp tool. I've sampled that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now I'm going to hold Alt or Option to sample an area. Let's just sample our subject for now so you can see. So Alt or Option to sample an area. And then we're just going to start painting in with this brush. Okay. So as you can see, and by the way, you can make your brush larger and smaller just by using the open and close brackets. So I'm literally clone stamping my subject over here. Okay. Boom with this disintegration brush. Okay, and you can see the more I go into it, the more she kind of fills out. There we go. Pretty cool, right? Um, 
and I'm actually maybe just use this because it already looks pretty good. Uh, just like fill this in a little bit more. So you can do this in a couple of ways. I want to show you this way and then I'll show you a different way too. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. It's just over there, but I could just like move it over here. Um, there we go. And well, the only thing, ah, the invisibility. So it's, <laughs> it's not, it's basically just invisible in some areas. And uh, so if I put it right back over my subject, it just looks regular because it's just invisible in some areas. So pretty cool that you can use the disintegration brush with the clone stamps tool. So let's show you a couple things you can do. With it. So that's one, obviously, just clone stamping your subject somewhere else. Uh, the, the second thing you can do is just do your background. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option and sample my background, okay, and then start painting over top of my subject and my subject is going to disintegrate. So I'm literally just copying the background from the right hand side to the left over top of my subject. And the more you paint, the more it disintegrates. See here, it sampled these mountains. So you just want to hold Alt or Option and sample those mountains there. Okay. So you can do this in a, in a couple of different ways, but basically she's just disintegrating away. Ah, help me. I'm disintegrating. I'm part of a Photoshop tutorial. Help. But I didn't agree to this. I'm just a person in a photo. Um, okay, so you kind of get the idea here. She's disintegrating away. There we go. Now I'm going to go, I'm just going to keep going a little bit more because I kind of want to use that original layer that we worked on as well. I'm going to combine the two. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty cool. All right, so again, I'm just clone stamping the background over top of our subject. And because I'm using this dense disintegration brush, it's looking like it's particles. But you could just switch to a normal soft edge brush and it would just clone stamp with a normal soft edge brush too. Okay, so there's really a bunch of ways to go at this. You could totally make your subject invisible by using like a spot heel. There we go. And uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and clone stamp her away a little bit more. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. Not 100% there. We got some background and stuff like that, but pretty good, I'd say. Okay. So you can see I was able to just erase away most of my subject. So if you wanted like a very sparse subject, you could do that. Okay. Now, Check this out, because my subject's now partially gone, so I'm going to take this and put it there. And then remember, we have this other layer that we just did um, earlier. You remember that, I'm sure, because it happened three minutes ago. Okay, so now I can just put this right over top. And because we actually already had some of that, um, you know, the under underneath particles are gone, it actually works. So now we'll just kind of move this into the right place. There we go. Just kind of move around the image, make sure it's in. Hey, is everyone in the right place? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Um, pretty cool, right? And basically, she's completely disintegrated. Uh, and then you can, obviously, this layer here, you can control where you want this to be visible or not. So check it out. I can put a layer mask on this layer. Okay. And now with my layer mask, I can go to my dense brush here and I could paint black on my layer mask. And look at this. When I paint black on my layer mask, basically it's hiding this layer. I just want to make sure that these two layers are in fact lined up. There we go. That looks pretty good, right? Yeah, they were pretty well lined up. Um, so now on this layer, if I just paint black with my brush tool, I can paint her back wherever I want, right? So, pretty powerful. So literally I'm just painting black on a layer mask now. I just switched to white and I'm painting her invisible again. But it, again, it's going to be with this particle system. Um, so everything that I paint, either black or white, is going to be a part of this uh, part of this world. It's going to be a part of this disintegration effect. Alrighty. So you get to kind of decide how much or how little you want to disintegrate. And then you can always add or subtract. This is totally non-destructive, right? So if it's like, you know, if you're doing this and you're like, I want her to be more visible, then you could just turn, you know, 
you could just layer mask in or out both of these layers if you wanted to. Okay, uh, if you wanted her to be more invisible, you could even create a layer above it and then clone stamp, you know, again and be like the feet. I want to be really invisible. Let's get the feet invisible. So just clone stamp over there a little bit with that. So it's a little too dense, so we'll just bring that up a little bit, and then there we go. So what we're getting at here, a lot of options, okay? A lot of ways you can do this. Now I realize we have some particle stuff here in the background. That can just be handled with a simple layer mask, and we'll just do that in a little bit with cleanup because we are going to be going back and forth with this whole disintegration effect. All right, let's go ahead and save this out. There we go. I'm just going to create a PSD folder in here. Perfect. All right. We're starting to take care of the process of our subject going away. Bye. Uh, <laughs> now we need to start creating these particles that are coming from my subject. And um, I want to like actually have these coming from uh, the subject's chest. So this is like an emotional disintegration, right? Like the heart is kind of like disintegrating out. Okay. And now you get to just kind of like have fun with it and really just paint whatever you want. So we're going to hit B for the brush tool, let's zoom in, and I'm going to hold Alt or Option to just sample this color here. So to sample the color of her skin. Okay, so no, no matter what image you're working with, start with sampling the, the color of the subject's skin. Okay, B for the brush tool. So any brush I choose is going to use that color. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with this disintegration effect here. And again, you can see I'm starting off with the dense one. So we're just going to kind of start painting it in here. Um, I'm on a new layer, right? So if I don't like something, if I want it gone, you can just mask it away. You can hit L for your lasso tool and select something away and then hit delete. You can delete the whole layer and start again. You know, you can you can do that. Um, but what I want to do first before I start with the actual like, hey, let's paint this disintegration is I want to do a sketch. I want to sketch how I want this disintegration to look on my overall image, then I'm going to fill in the details. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this layer sketch. There we go. And then for this, I'm just going to choose a regular soft edge brush and choose a color that we can see. There we go. Okay, so I want this to kind of like come out of my subject's chest here. There we go. And I'm looking at my reference photos, by the way. You know, I'm looking at photos of birds and believe it or not, I've actually done this before. <laughs> not my first time doing this, loading up a tutorial. Um, so I'm kind of taking a look at how, uh, how I've done this before and taking a look at references and just kind of like getting an overall sense for how um, how I want this disintegration effect to look. So just, you'd be surprised at how helpful a sketch like this can actually be because you can figure out the overall shape and form of your effect well before you actually get in and start trying to put it any more like details in. Because once you're, once you're at the detail phase, it's kind of too late. Well, I mean, it's never too late. You could just start over again if you wanted, but, um, the sketch phase just really allows you to get a lot figured out. And this is one of the things that I, I didn't really do that much of in my early days of Photoshop. And I was just like, let's get into it. I'm good. I don't need a sketch. Um, but now I'm like, as much as I possibly can, I'm like, let's sketch this out because you can just, you can get a lot figured out here during the sketch phase that's going to save you time. And you can just work on your overall composition um, and things like this. So please do the sketch. I know it seems like a little bit annoying and like, let's just get into the particles, dude. Um, but I think you're going to really like, so like this, I, you know, I want to bring that out to here. So E for the eraser tool, and then you can just erase, erase away with any brush that you want, you know, and you can just decide like, okay, well, how is this going? Maybe I want it to be up there. There we go. And we want to kind of have it erase away. Boom, away, away. <laughs> Sing a Moana song while you make a tutorial. 
There we go. So this is like the density that particles are going to be coming out in this direction here. Coming out a little bit more dense there. There we go. Cool. And then let's just adjust our trajectory a little bit so it's like, you know, boom. That's nice. I used red for this, huh? It looks like a heart. Unintentional, but really cool. There we go. And then these particles are just going to kind of random scatter around there. And then obviously we're going to have some particles kind of coming around there. And I want some to like kind of congregate around here. And then like a thin little wisp of particles to kind of come out and around there as well. Something like that. Okay, now something super cool with these particles, or with the sketch rather, is that you can hit Control or Command T for transform, right click and then go to warp, okay? So when this is in warp mode, I can actually start warping this around and moving it and like deciding like, you know, hey, where do I actually want this to, where do I want this to go, right? Like, is this in fact, you know, do I want to spread it out over there? Do I want to spread it down over here? Um, you can even right click and split warp vertically or horizontally. So let's go to uh, vertical and we'll just put that like right here. So I want, there we go. And now you can see I'm basically controlling um, different parts. Well, if I split this horizontally, boop, then I'm just controlling this quadrant here. So if I can kind of like pull this quadrant up and then pull this, come on, just, there we go. Pull that quadrant there and... There we go, each one of these. So just a really nice way you can kind of like get your overall shape figured out. And I think that looks pretty good. And notice I'm not super zoomed in for this. I'm purposely zoomed out because I want to see this image as a whole. Like this is a whole composition, right? I don't need to be super zoomed in for this. I want to see how all these particles are affecting my image because they're going to be a part of my composition. All right. And something that like like that I think looks really great. So let's go ahead and group the layer with itself. I'm just going to call this a sketch. We're going to right click on our uh, little eyeball there and make it red. And I'm going to hit V for my move tool and then hit like 2 for 20%. Okay. So it's there, right? It's there. It's helping us. Um, there we go. And I'll just leave it up. Why not, right? Because um, we're just painting with a brush tool. All right, so let's create a new layer, and we're just going to call this Disintegration Particles. Fantastic. So B for the brush tool, Alt or Option to sample this color from my subject. We've got our sketch there, which is so nice. Um, and now, look at this. And you can decide how large or how small you want your particles, but, um, you know, right here, next to my subject's chest. Sketch is making it look a little bit red. Let's put that underneath our disintegration particles. There we go. There we are. And I'm coming in here with like pretty dense to start with, right? Pretty dense, that's what, what we want. There we go. Pretty, pretty dense. And then we just move to less dense. So we'll right click and then now we'll just go to part two. We can see we can, you know, do some particles right outside of there too. And see how it starts to integrate this together, but you still have the core density. There we go. And by no means do I presume that I'm going to make this perfect like my first go round here. Okay. If I was doing this piece like as a portfolio piece. I mean, it, it, everything that I do is a portfolio piece, I guess, or like I hope that it will be uh, at least good enough to be a portfolio piece. This is something that I would work on over like the course of a couple of days, you know, continuing to like work on these particles and get it to look like it's really flowing and things like that. So um, I guess my point is you don't have to make it per perfect the first time you try this, okay? You're painting particles, so like Who's prepared to do that? No one. There we go. No one. I mean, some people are. Professional particle painters are. 
There we go. So you can see just bringing this in, and I'm with number two right now, so our particle brush number two. There we go. You can see it, it's kind of helping me spread these particles out and then, you know, build in some randomness, right? Like, just kind of have fun with it. Okay, so two is looking pretty good. I'm going to pop back to one just to give some of these areas a little bit of a core. Don't forget, though, that with all this stuff, like, if one is too dense, just go to Window, down to Brush, Settings, and then just bring your spacing up, okay? If you're like, yeah, I like that, but it's just a little bit too dense right now, psh, no prob. No prob. You can just, there we go. You can bring that in. Um, also, hit R for the Rotate tool. So R will help you rotate your canvas. And this can be super helpful because basically we're painting here. And when you're painting, uh, at least for me anyway, uh, so I'm using this pressure sensitive tablet. You can use a mouse. Um, but either with a mouse, you know, this movement is super natural for me. This movement is actually kind of hard for me to control, okay, with a mouse or trackpad or one of these. So, like, for instance, if I create a new layer like this, I can do that all day long with precision and make it go where I want. This coming up underneath this way is kind of tough for me. So you can hit R for your rotate tool and rotate the canvas. Okay, let's just rotate, just click and drag. So R and then click and drag. And then this can now become the shape that I'm used to, okay? So you can, you can rotate your canvas at any time and that's gonna really help you. And then um, you can just type in your angle right up here if you want. So if you're like, oh, how do I get back? You can just go to reset view right up here at the top. You can type in zero or you can hold a shift and that's gonna pop you down to 15 degree increments, okay? So, um, <laughs> I don't want you lost in rotation land, but ro rotation can be very, very helpful. All right, there we go. And kind of bring that up there. Cool, so that's looking pretty good, right? So you can see we're giving it a core. And again, I'm looking at my references here and I, I want these effects to have a core to them, you know, the, they, they should have, it shouldn't just be like a nebulous blob of nothingness, right? Like there should be, um, there should be a little bit of shape and uh, an order uh, to them. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and turn off our sketch so we can see this disintegration. We'll just make that orange. Um, and there we go. You can see I'm doing this on a couple different layers too. So. If you have like a layer that you're like, I really like that, I think that's exactly what I want, then don't bother just painting more on that same layer. We got we got layers for a reason. You make a bunch of them, you know what I mean? So um, that way I'm not gonna disturb these original layers if I wanna add more. So let's hit B for our brush tool. We'll go up to number three now. See how easy this is now that we've already created our, you know, created our brushes. You know, oh, you want it to be less dense now? We'll just choose number three. There we are. Perfect. And basically you want this to kind of like follow a bit of a, um, a bit of like natural order, right? There we go. So like this should have a bunch of particles in it right here because it's kind of like randomly spacing out, right? And that should be a little bit more dense. So I'm just like painting in a circle right there, you know? <laughs> nothing nothing too crazy there. All right, and that one's gonna follow along up there and then, you know, oh, I've just hit undo because I didn't want that to be like that. And then that's about where you're gonna go Not you, I'm talking to the particles here. There we go, painting with number three here. Random spattering of particles. Oh, you're looking so good. Uh, okay, now we'll make a new layer and we'll paint with number four. That's actually just like not a bad way to do this again, is just to like create a new layer each time you wanna create a new particle system, right? then you, you got them kind of separated out. So you got your density kind of built into your layers as well. 
not a bad way to do it. There we go, and let's go to number five. You don't have to use them all, by the way. There's no prereqs here. Prerequisites. You can just literally do whatever you want. And then let's pop some number sixes in there, too. Let's go ahead and squish down our brush panel real quick. There we go. Um, and then see number six, I can just go like really... Like these are just gonna be like totally random locations, so I can just kind of put these wherever. All right, so it's gonna make it a little bit more like, oh yeah, I guess one of the particles would go way over there. That that makes sense. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's it's just a really nice way to be like, okay, we've got density with our particles, fantastic, and then we've got like a random scattering with our particles as well. There we go. Looking good here. And then you can just create more layers. Let's go to the disintegrate two. Maybe make a brush a little bit smaller. Again, you get to decide how large or how small you want these particles to be. There we go. Just open and close brackets like the easiest way to do that. Alright, looking pretty good here, pretty good, someone call the pretty good patrol. <laughs> uh, hello, this is the pretty good patrol, I heard you guys are looking pretty good. Uh, how may I be of service today? Oh, nothing, you just wanted to say hi? Well, hello, good to meet you. There we go. Okay, now also we want to keep in mind, this is all just like on a big old group that we can turn off and on. So if we wanted to like mask some of this out, like if you're like, oh, it's too dense there or whatever, like you could put a layer mask on that and then like use a disintegration brush to paint black on your layer mask and look at this, you could just mask some of it out, right? Super easy to do, okay? Just paint white on your layer mask and mask it back in if you want to do that too. Okay, so shift click on a layer mask to disable it. There we go, I think that looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit less uh, dense, density. <laughs> Remember from uh, Back to the Future, I'm your density? That's what Michael J. Fox, his dad, tells his mom that when they're, in, when they're like teenagers. He meant to say destiny, but he said density. I'm your density. Anyway, I'm your density. Look at this, we can control it with a <laughs> mask. Let me get a little drink of water and take a break because you're probably saying, oh God, Aaron, just move on with the tutorial. Mm. I'm your density. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer and go ahead and group that with itself. And we're gonna call this disintegration body two. And we're going to right click and make this, um, oh, we're going to right click and make this orange. And I'm going to bring that above my sketch again. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our sketch on. See how much that sketched help? Like being able to do this, like we pretty quickly got these particles in there. In, and in a way that looks like pretty cool. Um, well, I think anyway. So let's go ahead and bring this sketch in there. Uh, again, and I want to bring some more particles down here. So B for the brush tool. Okay, we'll just start off with our dense particles here. Okay, go ahead and start sampling. Let's make our brush a little bit smaller. There we go. There we go. Disintegration one, dense. So, you know, Kind of makes sense that like right around the subject would be more dense, right? So we're just kind of filling this in here. Like, okay, cool. Like right around it, more dense. Yeah, that makes sense. There's more more particles closer to subject than there are farther apart. So, yep. Kind of makes sense there. You can kind of go at, there we go. My hands are unusable. They are disintegrating. Did 
This is unfortunate, but visually cool. Worth it. There we go. Okay. So, boom, look at that, a little bit closer to the body. New group, or sorry, new layer. Okay, and then some of this particle system. Okay, a little more spread out here, right? Kind of makes sense. Smaller particles closer to the body, some bigger ones a little bit further out, right? Go ahead to number three. Even further spread apart. Great. Let's go back to number two. I want to create like a line here. Let me show you with a mouse. I would just want to show you that you can indu indeed do this with a mouse. For this, I want to be right about there. B for the brush tool. Bam. Oh, I want to show you one other really cool thing, by the way. Okay, let's hit R for the rotate tool. If you're like, I want these particles to flow in an exact um, path, but I don't feel like I can paint this path, check it out. Hit P for the pen tool. Okay, let's just create a new layer. P for the pen tool. Okay, if I'm like, I want these particles to go in a path, so just click and drag. Pen tool is super cool. We have a lot of free tutorials and pro tutorials on the path tool here, okay? So I've just created a path like that, okay? Controller command, let's go ahead and make this kind of come in from the body there, okay? And let's just bring this in a little bit. I don't know that I'm gonna like have this in the final. I just wanna show you guys how this works. So you can make a path, right? Super easy, there's a stored here in your path dialog. So click off your path and then click back on your path. Okay, it's called a work path. We're just gonna call this body for now. Okay, so now check this out. If I hit B for the brush tool and I just click with this brush, let's go to the dense brush right now. So I'll just, just go to this brush here. Okay, and you're like, I want this to flow perfectly on that path, right? All you have to do is click on your path Okay, make sure you're on a new layer. So go to your path, click on the path, right click on it and go to stroke path. Boom, stroke that path, go to your brush. You can turn simulate pressure on as well, which will start off small and end off small and get big in the middle. So hit okay, boom, and check that out. Um, hello, I should probably have done that more often. Isn't that really cool? It's a very simple path too, but like it's a perfect path right? Like this is not, that would have been very difficult. I'll just try. I'll try to make something like that perfectly smooth. See, mine is like way more jaggedy and, you know, this one is, there we go. This one is just way smoother and more graceful than anything that I could possibly paint. So, if you're having any trouble painting and you want something to follow a particular path, this is just with the densest brush that I chose here, right? You could just do this with a less dense brush, okay? And you could even hit Control or Command, it's just a regular layer, so you could hit Control or Command T after it's done there if you want. Um, I'm gonna right click, flip that horizontally, and then take my little control point, where are you? Boop, there you are. Uh, bring that up over there, you know? So if you wanted something like this, um, you could do that. I, I don't know if I'm going to wind up using this because it was kind of just an example, but um, I'm going to try to use it because we made it and it's cool. There we go. You can always right click and warp this around too, by the way, right? So just like, you know, eh, you do too much of it, it's going to look a little bit weird. All right, let's do one that we're actually going to use. How's that? All right, P for the pen tool. Um, boop. And then click over here and drag out in that direction. Okay, click over here and then drag out in that direction. So you got the shape of what you want, just hit escape and that's gonna just like apply your path there. You can hold control or command to adjust the path settings. Let's click this body two. And B, I'm gonna right click and just choose the disintegration brush two. Okay, and then uh, let's, let's just go for it. Just create a new layer, right click, sorry, go to your path, right click on your path. Go to stroke path and then hit OK. Boom. You can do it again. Right click, stroke path, hit OK. Boom. Right click. Because it's random. This brush is random, right? So it's like every time I do this, it's not going to be exactly the same because it's a randomized brush. 
this is actually kind of a cool way to do it. Um, check this out. So you got that. Yeah. I gotta say, that's actually pretty cool. All right, so let's try it down here with the body. Funny thing, I've made this image a few times already, and literally this is the first time I was like, oh my gosh, I can use a path for this. <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about teaching that I've just grown to really love and appreciate over the years, is that every time you go to teach something, you just learn it better yourself can't help but to learn it better because if you want to teach something well you you got to understand it well you know <laughs> you kind of have to there's no you know it's a uh, it, it yeah it, it's very hard to teach something that you don't you don't really understand that well and I've run into that I've I've tried to teach things before and I'm like oh I don't actually understand what I'm talking about I need to do more research and I need to experiment more so I understand it better so I can pass that understanding on to you so this is really fun. Anyway, this is a cool example of like, I didn't even think to do this until right now. Okay, so we got that path. Let's go to body two, body three. Bing, bang, bing, body three. Okay, and now we just created a new layer. B for the brush tool. I'm gonna choose this more dense brush, but let's just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then you now let's go with density number two. I want the more dense brush, but I don't want it to be that broad, that dense. I'm just hitting undo a couple times. So B for the brush tool, the more dense brush, will make it a little smaller, but then don't forget your brush settings. Okay, you can just bring your spacing up and then it's like best of both worlds. And can you stroke the same path with multiple brushes? You betcha, totally can. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, new layer, okay, paths. We're gonna right click on this one, go to stroke this path. Boom, look at that, let's try it one more time. Right click, stroke that path again. Stroke it again, why not? Okay, let's go ahead and turn our sketch off so we can just see how that looks there. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. I, I don't like how it's not as visible here and then it gets more visible and then less visible and that's brush pressure, okay? So um, we can undo simulate brush pressure. Let's just smooth this path out a little bit too because it's looking a little bit like too much right now. There we go. If you want to convert a curve to a point, just hold Alt or Option and then click on that point. You have to be with the pen tool, by the way, P for the pen tool, Alt or Option and click on that point and then you can just kind of like redo it if you want to. There we go. Okay, cool. So, go ahead and create a new layer. I don't know if we needed to, but I kind of got lost in all my layers because we got a bunch of them. Okay, body, we're gonna right click. I'm gonna stroke this path, but this time I'm gonna turn off simulate pressure. So it's not gonna try to, ooh, and look at my brush tool. It painted with that wrong color. So B for the brush tool, gotta sample the color of the body and then do it again, okay? Right click and then stroke this path, no brush pressure and hit okay. Click off and then see how that looks, but then check it out. I can just hit B, right click, and then go to my disintegration brush two, okay? Right click on this path and then stroke that path. Boom, so you can see that was actually with my disintegration brush two. Let's try it again with again my disintegration brush two. And now we'll just hit B for the brush tool, right click, and then I'm gonna go to, well, let's just try three. Let's just go in order. Uh, right click and stroke that path and then hit okay. Boom, I don't know, I, did, did, I, did you even see anything? It did, but not a lot. So let's try like disintegration five. So I want some more straight spaced out here. Stroke path and boom. All right, here we go. Let's just create a new layer. Why am I not seeing anything with brush five? Do we make it just way too small? I made it too small, that's what it is. I gotta make it bigger. That's why I didn't see anything. It's gonna take all your brush settings into account, by the way, so keep that in mind. Okay, paths, right click, stroke path, hit okay, boom, you saw it there, right? Let's just zoom, zoom, right click again, stroke path, hit okay, boom. So you see, 
that was pretty well spaced out. But now we have this like pretty dang nice one here. And check this out. We can do a couple more things. Okay, new layer. I'm going to work with these layers in a second, believe me. Let's go B for the brush tool, go back to our dense one. See, it's huge right now. We have to like change our brush size and stuff like that, right? All right, just hit undo. Uh, I'm on a new layer, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to stroke this path with this brush now. Again, let's just do it one more time. Okay, but then this time, because I did all that on a new layer, right? Like what if you want it to be visible and down towards the body, but up there is way too much, right? It's not, not looking good. So just put a layer mask on there, right? I'm going to hit controller command I to invert my layer mask. And then just with this same disintegration brush, I'm just going to paint white on my layer mask to make it visible right here. So I have this, see what I mean? Turn this layer off and on is just more visible there, right? So you can kind of just, you can create variable density even along a path, which I think is um, super, super cool, if we're being totally honest. Okay, we'll put a layer mask on that and then just paint black right up there as well. All right, there we go. And now if we want this to look anywhere near integrated, I just need to take a brush like three And we need to kind of do some of this around there because it just doesn't doesn't look like like why you got such a solid one going over there, you know? Perfect. And by the way, all that's just on layers, right? So you can just um, you can experiment with it. You can. You can paint it in and out. And don't forget, if it's too dense, like I think it actually is, you can just grab a layer mask and paint black on your layer mask. Let's just go to a density too here. See, I'm just painting black on my layer mask and it's painting away particles. Okay, these brushes are super cool. So for this whole tutorial, you can stay away from like just a soft edge brush. Like when, when it comes to erasing, when it comes to clone stamping, when it comes to layer masking, you can use these brushes for literally the entire process. So if I hold Alt or Option and take a look at my layer mask, that's what my layer mask looks like, right? If I hold Shift and click on my layer mask, there's the before and after, because it was too dense. It didn't look real. So before and after. So I'm taking away some density by painting with this brush on there. So even when you get down to the little zoomy zoom, you even get these like inverted particles that look pretty cool, right? So it creates even more variation within the entire flow. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to just group those. So we have this here and we're staying pretty well organized here. So you can see we've got we've got our body um, again. This one, if I want to, it's already got a layer mask on it. So if I want it to be a little bit less dense right around here, just paint black on my layer mask. OK, this is such a cool effect. I really hope you guys are enjoying this. Well, let's do one more. I'm going to put this in another group. By the way, you can totally I don't know. My naming conventions are all off. I can fix that later. But you can name all of your layers. I just don't name all my layers. I never have. I never will. Because it just takes too long. And I, me, for my personal workflow, I use a ton of layers. I love it because I can go back in here and I can turn some of these off and on. And I can be like, oh, you know what? That was way too dense. But I liked everything else I did. So I want to make this one. Or just this one, I want to go back in and layer mask that way. So Personally, I don't ever name my layers um, very rarely anyway, but I do name my groups and that and I color them and that helps me to stay uh, stay organized here. So whatever workflow works for you works for me too. do whatever feels right. You know, uh, I don't I don't want to say that my method is the best method or the only method. It's far from either. Uh, it's just what works for me, and I would uh, um, encourage you to find something that works for you, too. 
there we go. So some larger particles right here too, right? So particle size is another one. We don't necessarily want them all to be the same. Same size. Same size, no good. Different size, good. Alrighty, cool. And now we'll just paint some up there and paint some up there. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab a, a four, make it a little bit larger, and just do a random scattering, splattering. Honestly, I could do this all day. You know, kind of going in here and tweaking it because it's uh, it's really fun. <laughs> and you're creating a dense particle system here, so it, it shouldn't be something that you really rush. You know, give it the give it the time that it respects. But we're almost done, really. I mean, with the actual particle system itself, like we're almost done. I mean, I I think that actually looks pretty good. It's got a couple like density issues. Like, I think this area up there is a little bit too dense. Um, but then, you know, you just find where you feel like it's too dense and then just paint black. You know, with your fancy brush on your layer mask. There we go. Pretty cool. I think that's looking pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Alrighty, let's go ahead and minus that out. And there is, there is our effect particles. We're gonna make them look more three-dimensional. So don't you worry about that. Um, let's go ahead and save this out. Now, we're good. We're good from here. I do wanna say, by the way, um, I think just generally it's important to note this. Um, I, I'm a little bit time restrained in this tutorial. Like I want to get this done so I can show you the next step. But if this were, um, just something that I was doing outside of a tutorial, I would get it to this point and then I would go take a break. I would just go do something else for 20 minutes, come back at it again and rework it a little bit. And I would do that over and over and over again until I was happy with it. So, um, I'd probably do it over the course of a couple of days also, just because, the, the chances of you getting something, of me getting something exactly right the first time I do it, uh, usually if I come back and refine and refine and continue to look at references, I find the quality usually improves. So, um, because we're in a tutorial setting, I gotta move on. But again, if this was not in a tutorial, I would, for this step alone, I would spend a couple days on this step. Not like 40 hours continuously, but like 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes there, and then bring it all together. Okay, so I just wanna make that, cause you're gonna be doing stuff like this on your own, and I would encourage you to do something like that. If you're in a timeline, whatever, budget, you just like gotta get it done, now you know how to do that. But if you're creating something that you want to be like, uh, you know, like you wanna put all of your heart into, take a couple of days, uh, chances are it's gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna be happy with that. And I suggest that on pretty much all of my edits, especially when I'm doing complicated work like this or coloring work, or things like that, that are like very fine tuny, I spend a couple of days on those. So just wanna put that out there as a general, like, hey, I, I think that this is worth knowing. Uh, that's generally how I work. Um, so, um, and if you find something like this is like, Aaron did that in five minutes, but it takes me an hour. Um, don't worry, for me, I would spend hours and hours on this step as well. As well. Okay, done. In the next step, we're gonna show you how to add some dimension to all your little dotsy doodles around your images. All right, <laughs> thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Camera speeds, screen speeds, sound speeds.